Soil testing can be an important management tool when developing a successful fertilizer program which adequately addresses your plant's needs. It all begins with taking soil samples properly and submitting them to a lab for analysis. However, once you receive the results back from your lab, it can sometimes be difficult to understand what the lab is reporting on a soil test report. Different labs will typically display the same information, but sometimes in differing formats. Once you have a good understanding of how to interpret the information and in what order, the format from the lab will become irrelevant. In our example, we'll walk you through the proper order to read a soil test and what those values for each result means. In this example, we will be reviewing results obtained using the Malik 1 soil extractant technique. Soil pH greatly affects the availability of nutrients and the activity of soil microorganisms. Therefore, always begin reading a soil test report by reviewing the soil pH of the sample. In general, a pH range of 5.5 to 6.5 is considered to be suitable for most crops. Soil pH less than 5.5 is considered highly acidic and can reduce the availability of some plant nutrients and the populations of certain soil microorganisms such as bacteria and actinomycetes. A soil pH greater than 7 is alkaline and can negatively limit the availability of many important micronutrients such as iron and manganese. Phosphorus soil test levels should be the second item reviewed on a soil test report. Phosphorus levels are very important as phosphorus has numerous roles in plant biology. For example, Phosphorus hastens maturity through conversion of starch to sugars. Phosphorus is also responsible for root development and cell formation, especially in young plants. In general, the acceptable range for soil test phosphorus is 5 to 30 parts per million. Medium values are between 15 to 28 parts per million. Excessive levels are greater than 28 parts per million. 8 to 14 parts per million are low and less than 7 parts per million is considered very low. Always remember that phosphorus availability is greatest between a soil pH of 5.5 to 6.5. Some soil test labs differentiate between immediately available phosphorus and phosphorus likely to be available over the course of a growing season. In this example, P1 weak is phosphorus which is considered immediately available. P2 strong is that phosphorus which will likely be available over the course of a growing season. Potassium soil test levels should be the next item reviewed on a soil test report. Potassium is important as potassium promotes development of stems and leaves through carbohydrate formation. In addition, potassium serves as a catalyst in iron uptake. Potassium also increases resistance to disease, promotes the translocation of sugars, and is very important in os osmotic regulation. Deficiency symptoms of potassium are yellow or burned areas along edges of leaves. Low potassium levels are often expressed in older leaves. The acceptable range is 5 to 60 parts per million. Generally, high potassium levels are observed in high clay or high organic matter containing soils. Soils with high levels of magnesium may also require higher potassium applications. Sandy soils require more frequent light potassium applications compared to heavier textured soils. The use of controlled release potassium sources are also recommended on high sand content soils. Magnesium values should be reviewed next. Magnesium is a necessary component for chlorophyll. Deficiency symptoms are observed on older growth. The acceptable range for magnesium is 5 to 20 parts per million. With most soils, Liming with dolomite to ensure adequate soil pH for proper plant growth will provide more than adequate concentrations of magnesium. Magnesium deficiencies are more common in sandy acidic and low organic matter containing soils. Magnesium deficiencies can also occur in soils which are subject to high rainfall and frequent leaching. Heavy liming with calcium carbonate lime or heavy use of potassium may also reduce soil magnesium levels 
and induce magnesium deficiency in plants. Calcium levels should be reviewed next. Calcium is important as calcium strengthens cell walls and promotes root hair formation. Calcium also aids in the translocation of sugars. The acceptable range for calcium is 5 to 50 parts per million. In most environments, liming with dolomite to ensure adequate soil pH for proper plant growth will provide more than adequate levels of calcium. Calcium deficiencies are uncommon. However, they occur more in sandy, acidic, and or low organic matter containing soils. Notice in our soil test example, the calcium level is extremely high. This is very common in Florida soils, as many Florida soils contain sediment high in calcium. When sampling soil for submission to a soil test lab, one should make an attempt to minimize the inclusion of calcium carbonate chips or rocks, as these will artificially raise soil test calcium, which is not plant available. Iron is an important micronutrient element notably utilized as a catalyst in chlorophyll formation. Therefore, soil test iron levels should be reviewed prior to other micronutrients. The acceptable range for iron is 12 to 25 parts per million. It should be noted, however, that direct correlations regarding soil iron content and plant responses have not been clearly established. So while many soils may contain large quantities of iron, the possibility for that iron to be plant unavailable exists. As previously noted, soil pH plays an important role in the availability of iron. Iron is most available at soil pH levels less than 7. If soil pH is greater than 7 and iron is less than 12 parts per million, applications of soluble iron are highly recommended. Iron deficiency symptoms are often expressed on new leaves which are thin and pale green to yellow between the midribs. This is often referred to as intravenal chlorosis. Veins and ribs typically fade first. Dieback may occur in acute cases. Iron deficiency is easily and rapidly correctable using foliar iron applications. Manganese is a very important micronutrient element for plants, especially many turf species. In general, the acceptable soil test range for manganese is 2 to 10 parts per million. It should be noted, however, that direct correlations regarding soil test manganese content and plant responses have not been clearly established. So while many soils may contain large quantities of manganese, the possibility for manganese to be unavailable exists, especially if soil pH is greater than 7. As previously noted, soil pH plays an important role in the availability of manganese. Manganese is most available at soil pH levels less than 7. If soil pH is greater than 7, and manganese is less than 10 parts per million, applications of soluble manganese are highly recommended. Deficiency symptoms are a dark midrib with chlorotic fading between the veins, also referred to as intravenal chlorosis. Symptoms generally occur on new growth first. Manganese deficiency is easily and rapidly correctable using foliar manganese applications. Cation exchange capacity, also known as CEC, gives an indication of the soil's ability to retain plant nutrients such as potassium, magnesium, and calcium. A generally acceptable CEC range is considered to be 5 to 35 milliequivalents per 100 grams of soil. Levels higher than 35 milliequivalents per 100 grams of soil are not necessarily detrimental but may be uncommon in a turf or landscape setting. A suggested range of the total makeup or percent base saturation is 65 to 75 percent as calcium, 12 to 18 percent as magnesium, and 3 to 5 percent as potassium. Increasing cation exchange capacity generally occurs with increasing soil organic matter or clay content. Generally, the higher the cation exchange capacity value, the more productive a soil is. Increasing a soil's cation exchange capacity can be accomplished by incorporating soil amendments such as organic matter. Caution, however, should be used when incorporating some soil amendments as they may undesirably affect soil hydraulic properties such as saturated hydraulic conductivity. The percent base saturation refers to the proportion of a soil's cation exchange capacity occupied by the cations calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. 
In this example, calcium has a base saturation value of 68.5% and magnesium has a base saturation value of 16.7% as shown above. Therefore, calcium occupies half of the total exchange sites and magnesium occupies less than one-fifth of the total exchange sites. In general, the acceptable percent range for each base cation is 65 to 75 percent for calcium, 12 to 18 percent for magnesium, and 3 to 5 percent for potassium. With sandy soils, such as a sand-based putting green, base saturation percentages have little value for making agronomic decisions, as sandy soils generally have very low cation exchange capacity. Zinc is an important micronutrient element needed for numerous plant metabolic processes such as the conversion of ammonium to amino nitrogen. In addition, zinc is necessary for chlorophyll production. In general, the acceptable soil test range for zinc is 1 to 3 parts per million. It should be noted, however, that direct correlations regarding soil test zinc content and plant responses have not been clearly established. So while many soils may contain large quantities of zinc, the possibility for zinc to be unavailable exists, especially if soil pH is greater than 7. As previously noted, soil pH plays an important role in the availability of zinc. Zinc is most available at soil pH levels greater than 5 and less than 7. If soil pH is greater than 7 and zinc is less than 3 parts per million, applications of soluble zinc are recommended. Deficiency symptoms of zinc are intervenal chlorosis in both younger and some older leaves. In addition, young leaves appear dwarfed, dark, and desiccated. Zinc deficiency is easily and rapidly correctable using foliar zinc applications, and granular applications can also be effective. Copper plays an important role as a constituent of oxidation reduction enzymes and as a catalyst in plant metabolism. In general, the acceptable soil test range for copper is 0.1 to 0.5 parts per million. It should be noted, however, that direct correlations regarding soil test copper content and plant responses have not been clearly established. So while many soils may contain large quantities of copper, the possibility for copper to be unavailable exists, especially if the soil pH is greater than 7. As previously noted, soil pH plays an important role in the availability of copper. Copper is most available at soil pH levels greater than 5 and less than 7. Furthermore, copper deficiencies can occur in high organic soils, soils fertilized heavily with nitrogen, phosphorus, and zinc, and soils established from flat wood environments. If soil pH is greater than 7 and copper is less than 0.5 parts per million, applications of soluble copper are recommended. Toxic conditions may exist when copper levels exceed 5 parts per million in soils with pH values less than 7. Liming to a pH of 7 is the easiest way to resolve copper toxicity. Deficiency symptoms are intervenal chlorosis in younger leaf margins, leaf tips initially turn bluish, wither, and dro droop, plant dwarfing may occur. In general, symptoms progress from leaf tips to the base of the plant. Toxicity symptoms include reduced shoot vigor and poorly developed root systems. Copper deficiency is easily and rapidly correctable using foliar copper applications. Granular applications can also be effective. Boron plays an important role in many essential plant functions. Boron facilitates sugar transport, auxin metabolism in roots, and influences cell elongation. The acceptable soil test range for boron is 1 to 1.5 parts per million. It should be noted, however, that direct correlations regarding soil test boron content and plant responses have not been clearly established. So while many soils may contain large quantities of boron, the possibility for boron to be unavailable exists, especially if soil pH is greater than 7. As previously noted, soil pH plays an important role in the availability of boron. Boron is most available under acidic soil conditions. If soil pH is greater than 7, and boron is less than 1.5 parts per million, applications of soluble boron are recommended. Furthermore, boron deficiencies are more likely to occur on sandy, low organic matter soils. Deficiency symptoms are thickening, curling, and chlorotic leaves developed on dwarf plants. Chlorotic streaks may develop in intervenal areas. 
Furthermore, pale green leaf tips may occur. As boron is mobile in the plant, symptoms first appear on meristematic tissues and young leaves. Boron deficiency is easily and rapidly correctable using foliar boron applications. Granular applications are also very effective. Nitrogen levels are not accurately determined by soil tests. The availability of nitrogen is subject to numerous soil environmental conditions. Therefore, to accurately determine the necessity for nitrogen in a fertility program, a tissue test may be needed in conjunction with a soil test. In some cases, organic matter serves as a reserve for nitrogen. Labs, therefore, list an estimated nitrogen release figure based on the percentage of organic matter present to estimate the nitrogen that will be released over the season in terms of pounds per acre. The expected release of nitrogen through the action of microorganisms is difficult to predict. Labs also provide various techniques for determining soil organic matter. The most accurate technique uses the percent weight loss on ignition method. The buffer pH is used to indicate potential liming requirements. If the determined soil pH value is greater than 7, then disregard the buffer pH value. Soil values provided in this example report are consistent with conditions commonly found in South Florida soils. Based on this report, an effort should be made to reduce soil pH by using acidifying forms of nitrogen such as ammonium sulfate or by using acidifying soil conditioning products such as Harrell's Max Salt RX. Regular applications of micronutrients in the sulfate form or chelated liquid form should be considered when soil pH is above 7. Finally, regular applications of potassium or controlled release potassium should be considered as potassium values are bordering on low levels and potassium leaches easily from sandy soils.